Today is the day of specializations. It's the day of upgradation. There was a time when um, people used to think in our uh, physio, the freshly passed out BPT students, that uh, we need some clinical experience after the BPT degree. We need to work for some years, serve the people, learn uh, the real life skills or save money and then do the higher education after BP. I am going to talk today about all that you can do in terms of education after BPT. So that is like post-professional education. Especially in India we have this uh, Master of Physical Therapy. Also another thing which I would want to highlight, uh, the terminology. For example, uh, the Master of Physiotherapy where uh, and then Master of Physical Therapy and some of them are abbreviating into these both are abbreviated into MPT some others are there who are abbreviating into MPTH like Mumbai which was also uh, the other college in Mumbai which was giving MSCPT degree actually the nomenclature has to be same when it is from one country and uh, graduates apply for overseas. They get applications from four, four different uh, candidates with four different nomenclature for the degree name itself. Physical therapy, physiotherapy. Okay. If you want to follow physical therapy, it is the American convention, APTAS. If it is physiotherapy, it is the UK or the Australian convention. We should be clear in this. What I am trying to say is, every principal should be aware of this. Because the nomenclature change is recommended by the principal and then it is approved by the academic council and uh, of course the head of the academic council is the vice chancellor. This will solve major issues of MPT. Um, when they apply abroad, they get a response that your master's degree is not valid. Uh, you need to do some extra courses. We don't consider it as a master's degree. This is the common thing which our Indian graduates face. Our bachelor degree is considered as a basic level of qualification. But the master's degree is not considered as a master's level of qualification. Our BPT is in par with the undergraduate education. Okay, of course, but what happened in uh, UK, US and Canada is, especially US and Canada, because they have converted that uh, there is no more BPT, there is no more MPT, nothing there. And it is only the doctor of physical therapy. The doctor of physical therapy is an extended program five years program. It combines uh, whatever the essence of both BPT and MPT. There is no specializations in the DPT. Specializations are always dependent upon optional and extra training. Here what is happening is we are following the medis medical education where they have an undergraduate education and then the postgraduate education has specializations. It's fine, you can have specializations, it's not a problem, but the problem here exists in, in the execution of the specialized specialities. But first question, I'll go section by section. Most of the BPT passing out students or the interns will ask, Sir, do we really need to do MPT? Uh, AOMPT, we have a lot of members who are the interns, they become members. They are happy to upgrade themselves uh, during their clinical training. 
and uh, they have queries that should we really do MPT okay I just give a smile and uh, I say tell them that yes you are right they tell you didn't give me any answer I say the moment you are getting the question it means that it is not necessary <laughs> as simple as that see if I am uh, clear I will not ask the question so clear in terms of doing the MPT or not doing MPT should we re is it necessary to do MPT means can we be without it doing the MPT is it really worth doing the MPT as a passed out graduate in uh, 2000 that year in Tamil Nadu when we passed out was the same year when the MPT was introduced in the whole of Tamil Nadu and it, we always see that the MPT programs are easily launched in the private institutions because it's faster turnaround of uh, policies but the government institutions have not started MPT the physios are fighting the you know they keep on representing 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 and nothing is happening they are even uh, some like institutions like PGH Chandigarh uh, they went to the court and lot of uh, things but still nothing is moving on of course there are leading government institutions which are actually role models for MPT because of the national level entrance exams the competitive exams but coming to the point what is your objective of doing an MPT that is what determines whether it is necessary to do the MPT if you are doing MPT because you want an extra degree uh, there is a clinic which uh, nameplate saying he or she is a BPT and you want to put a clinic your, your clinic is also nearby them and you want an MPT there the three letters and you think that patients will come to you because you are MPT trust me no patient goes to a therapist because they are MPT their awareness about physiotherapy is appreciable it has grown a large extent over the years over the past 25 years but they are not differentiating an MPT from a BPT for them physiotherapist is a physiotherapist if the physiotherapist is good that's what matters they don't see the degrees some of the clinicians also feel that uh, we'll do a PhD I'm going to anyway take a research issue separately they think of doing a PhD because in the clinic they can prefix doctor if I'm not a PhD I just put uh, Senthil P. Kumar for example and if I'm a PhD I can put Dr. Senthil P. Kumar and in a clinic when I have the doctor thing tag it attracts the patients more also remember Patients also see what is there after the name. Is it MBBS or MD? So if your higher priority is the doctor prefix, the qualification has to be named as MD in physiotherapy. Simple as that. Um, so always remember, things have to go synchronized and articulated. If the degree is not MD, you cannot expect the patients to understand you as a doctor. Dental, they have MD, yes. At least, they are happy. All others you see, uh, the Ayush, they all have MD, MD. They are very clever. Also, uh, the undergraduation is BAMS or BUMS. But the master is MD in Unani, MD in Ayurveda. You understood what is the uh, catch there? And don't think that um, the doctor tag is also used as commercial, uh, what is called as um, a chocolate to kidnap a kid in front of the primary schools or ice creams to kidnap the kid. 
because when the student takes the admission the principal tells after bpt you can you are actually doctor they are very happy second year the teacher comes and then tells what you know nothing first year whatever you read nothing you are remembering how you are going to become doctor okay that is a different issue after that they become uh, passing out and then they come to know the reality that the doctor prefix is only a convention it's not a officially approved or government approved uh, sanction so they get stuck and then again the next admission when they take mpt the principal tell after mpt you can prefix doctors oh my goodness i'll tell you one thing for both bpt or mpt prefixing doctor it's both conventional only and the most important thing is we are having a mismatch there if it is md in physiotherapy you can definitely do that it's beautiful it looks very attractive but if you see phd and then prefixing doctor lakhs of people are doing that only everybody has done phd phd in acupuncture phd in uh, yoga phd anywhere anything some of the phd are even one year some of the phd are even honorary phd and now commercial phd is available well anyway phd will come but what i am trying to tell is you don't do an mpt for additional identity because that identity is not going to come especially the clinical practice scenario if you think specialization makes you to treat patients better i will tell you the reality if you keep all the mpt students from all the colleges and randomly pick up the mpt and also the freshly passed out bpt freshly passed out mpt for both of them you give a patient honestly what i am trying to tell so that mpt how they perform you can compare with how the bpt performs most of the institutions have become more of talking and less of doing when it comes to mpt the leading institutions asia's second um, ranked and india's number one private institution they talk lot about history differential diagnosis uh, so much of uh, what is called as the reasoning process research evidence everything and finally they ask the mpt student to touch the patient they are not able to handle that means clinical competency is not actually reflected by mpt i am telling about the majority maybe some institutes are good um if it is good it's because it is strong in the bpt clinical exposure examples of such institutes are svinitha they have a good clinical exposure in bpt itself so their mpt is strong there's no doubt about it but if you see there also we are coming to the other side clinical is there in the mpt but what is the academics what is the research output because in mpt what you are actually trying to um, develop is a higher education why the person has to do more higher degree not for identity identity comes only with your performance identity comes with a social responsibility okay uh, if you are involving yourself in uh, camps if you are involving yourself in coming in uh, tv news channels and reaching the public your identity automatically builds up celebrities will start coming to you and you are uh, the most sought after physical therapist okay um, and also remember this mpt when you are actually trying to see that um, the next thing that it is the teaching side so that means for a bachelor of physiotherapy students and colleges where bpt alone is there and we know the guidelines that for a bpt a bpt cannot teach okay they can uh, supervise in the clinical practice like a clinical instructor 
but they cannot teach uh, as a faculty. Assistant lecturer, there is a terminology, uh, but that is not actually uh, approved by the UGC. Okay. Uh, even the clinical demonstrator also they are telling that uh, it's better that it is MPT. So remember, when you are doing MPT, it is for teaching, not for clinical skills. So if you want a teaching profession, MPT is necessary. But before that, no, don't just think about physiotherapy as for masters. Because in teaching there are various options. You can teach anatomy. You can teach physiology. Because you can do MSc in anatomy, MSc in physiology. Absolutely. If you don't want to do a physiotherapy masters. But the disadvantage of the anatomy and the physiology is three years masters it is. Okay, MPT is in Mumbai alone three years. Uh, because it is MPTH or MSCPT, extra letters are there, so one year extra students have to spend. The Mumbai Government Institute, I am telling, okay, the KEM and all. Private ones are two years because more than two years they keep, no student is going to join the master's degree. MD, three years, five years plus three. Physical therapist, we say that we are on par with medicine. Whether we will accept a five year BPT program, that is four years of academics plus one year of internship. Will the students be happy with that? This is what we discussed in the BPT syllabus and curriculum. But here, masters being two years versus three years, I am giving an option like why not make the masters as MD in physiotherapy with three years? Okay, we'll come back to this why this three years is needed. Okay, uh, because first and foremost, the BPT people are coming from different colleges and they are joining the MPT in a single batch. Most of the MPT, how it goes on? We are talking about Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences in Karnataka. It's a two years MPT program. But the exam is there only at the end of the second year. Did you hear carefully? No exam in first year. Wow! Enjoy one and a half years. Last six months. Fast, 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 finish the research project, collect the notes, give the exam, get that three letters behind your name, M, P, T. Which speciality you want? Sports? Ah, oh, okay. Cardio? Ah, oh, okay. Neuro? Ah, oh, okay. In the colleges, all are together in the single classroom. All classes happen to them together. This is the average level I am talking. Reality is below the average, which I will tell you now. So all the specializations, if they have to be treated similarly, why the speciality is given in the degree alone, when you are not giving a specialized training for the candidates. If you say MPT sports is there and MPT ortho is there, you should differentiate the sports by actual postings, sports federations, academies, the candidates have to be posted on field, exposure to the sports, be it lab investigations for VO2 max or be it the field testing and conditioning. This is something which you have to think seriously about because what happens is students are thinking of I like pediatrics, I, I, need, I want a degree in pediatrics uh, because I, my um, grandfather's uh, um, you know, cousin's son, he is owning a, uh, he is a pediatrician, he is owning a big uh, child care hospital. 
so easily I can be a specialist pediatric physiotherapist so I want to get that pediatric degree specialization is seen as a kind of an advancement so what is to be necessary here is more than six months don't give the MPT any option of common subjects if common topics are addressed to strengthen the physiotherapy BPT I am, I am now explaining how the three years curriculum can be okay the existing one is two um, in the three years one year you can allow for the revival of the BPT knowledge in the candidates because most of the times they study BPT and first year what they read because they study they don't learn okay and first year what they studied exam okay disappeared second year what they study they don't remember first year also they give the second year exam and that also gone second year knowledge gone third year they study third year exam over third year itself so and they come after fourth year and somehow like wow I became intern oh no more studies suddenly they decide that I need a higher degree and then they join the MPT so they need to be refreshed upon all the four years of the BPT but which ones have to be refreshed as I was highlighting in the BPT syllabus the competency based curriculum what is important to be a best physical therapist what are the core techniques that is needed what are the evidence informed uh, methods that the therapist must be definitely trained all there were mentioned in the BPT it was given some kind of training but here one year you can concentrate fully on what is called as the basic professional training BPT itself again if it is two years MPT program that basic uh, refresher aspect should come only six months and also remember that it should be only practical no theory because you have completed BPT and you are coming to MPT means advanced skills skills of thinking process if it is to do with decision making and reasoning it should be practical only everything practical so that the MPT actually comes to that fact that yes first year full BPT was there now this first year full physiotherapy practically I am very strong and then next comes to the stage of second year where as per the specialization what is the option so if it is orthopedic there it is the what is called as six months is over one year and another six months or if you want to divide it six 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 four six months I am not propo proposing a semester system which I told you already that semester is not for the medical profession so everybody has to understand that the MPT providing at a semester level is the worst sin that the principal or the college can do to the students I don't advise that the MPT students do semester system and uh, spoil um, and become a master technician it's not MPT it is M tech okay so what you need to know, know here is the st stages okay so two years MPT program six months six months six months six months three years MPT program one year one year one year okay that last one year you will have six months and six months compartment but the existing MHRD the curriculum model curriculum tells MPT in semester system okay so that is again uh, far apart from what uh, my perspective is okay I am not uh, intending to hurt the sentiments of everybody whoever is actually in the responsible positions but one more important thing why I am coming live and I am talking about professional issues is because this should go on record this should be available online people must watch this even 100 years after my death and they should feel that what is called as those days only he spoke about this 
and every MPT student is also responsible for the type of instruction that they receive, type of nomenclature, the degree what they receive. They all can give an application and uh, um, because students are requesting then the principal has to review the records and uh, try to modify the terminology. It's all fine. It's, it's automatic. Everything happens. We are living in a country which is the largest democracy in the world. So people have to ask. Same way students need to ask. There's nothing that comes without asking. In fact, many things come after crying. Okay. So for those who have just doubts on BPT syllabus, please refer the previous webinar where I have talked about the BPT syllabus. Okay. Um, so what we have here is MPT and six six months. So what we do in the first six months? First six months is a refresher of the full BPT but only practicals of the BPT competency training. Next six months is the uh, MPT degree oriented but in the degree there will be a basic. For example, if it is MPT neuro, that means we have neuro rehabilitation. So that six months neuro rehabilitation principles, evaluation, treatment approaches, uh, you can give them uh, what is called as presentations to do on that, cover the theory and take the practicals alone for the six months. It should be like six months of workshop on neuro rehab, all approaches, fully practical. And at the same time, they should also try to assist with the BPT teaching because we are grooming the MPT to become teachers. So that means they should get an exposure to teach. In the colleges, when you are asking the MPT students to teach the BPT, be honest and be what is called as um, responsible enough to give them the stipend. Because you are utilizing the MPT in the clinical area, you are also utilizing the MPT in the teaching side. You need to give the stipend. Government institutes provide the stipend. The amount of stipend I am not whether whether I am not very clear about whether it is satisfactory or not. But whatever is given, it makes the value for their effort because as a student they are learning. They are going to learn when they are treating patients, but they are helping you with the caseload. They are helping in the income of the clinical department and the same way teaching the students also. They might uh, help you with uh, supervising the batches of practical students when they are practicing. Faculty should be there. Faculty is there to supervise how the MPT student is actually teaching and also to provide the inputs to the MPT that yes, these things you can improve. There should be an evaluation format which is again calculated for the internal assessment for the MPT. Without faculty, if the MPT is going, it should be a repeat class or revision class. Don't send the MPT student for a new topic. Because we know that BPT cannot teach. Only MPT qualified are lecturers or assistant professors. Why are you giving the topic to the MPT and ask the students to teach? What is happening is the adulteration where that uh, seminar presentations of MPT has to be done in front of the faculty. Only faculty and the other PG students, the batchmates. That never happens. They give the seminar topic to the student PG, ask the PG to take in front of the UG students without the faculty. So the PG student thinks faculty not there means better because we can just finish the class and then go. And they, they cannot maintain that teacher to student. Uh, uh, it's impossible because they are also student and these people are also students. So it's very tough and it alliterates the education system. If at all you are part of such a system, ensure that you voice it so that it stops. And then the next thing here comes to 
if it is MPT ortho, that six months, the second six months should be uh, there are physical screening, physical examination in orthopedics, differential diagnosis in orthopedics, and of course the manual techniques in orthopedics. If you are focusing on manual therapy to be primary focus, you can extend that into full one year because first six months is the basic refresher, the PPT refresher, competency and skill training. Next one year you give for ortho fully where the physical examination, differential diagnosis and the adjunctive treatments and another six months for manual techniques because physical therapy is about manual therapy. There are a lot of electrotherapy, there is massage and all that which is in BPT, I know that and I have told the solutions in the BPT webinar. But remember that manual techniques are very very important for physical therapists. Manual muscle testing is the first one which actually came as a evaluation technique in the evolution of physiotherapy itself. And passive movements which is also a manual technique. So remember that that should be given that weightage there. Okay, so all the manual techniques, be it Maitland's concept, Mulligan concept, whichever. Same like neuro rehab means Bobat, neuro rehab means PNF, every approach that should be covered there. So you can extend for that approaches alone, specific approaches, you can take another six months, sensory integration, um, give them all this practical exposure. Make sure that the genuine experts should be invited to take the sessions and classes. If the quali qualification of the faculty there in the college is not trained, you should invite the faculty and make sure that these people are given that advanced training. They should know what is the advanced. BPT, we know something. What is that extra in BPT? The MPT student should be shown with reality. Otherwise, it will not motivate them to actually do anything extra. Other than just putting the three letters extra, nothing they will do. And you cannot blame the graduates of MPT that they don't know anything. Unfortunate scenario. Okay. Last six months, let them actually do the research dissertation or the project in the two years program, the last six months. So one year is full specialization training. The first six months when the competency or the refresher is done, they submit the proposal or a research synopsis. And last six months let them do the research, uh, complete that research and prepare for exams. Anyway, preparation is throughout. When it is clinical skill training, most of the examination and evaluation has to be practical and clinical. There is no question of in an MPT exam, a BPT student is a model or another MPT student itself is a model. No. Real patient only is the model. The patient has to speak the native language of that region. The MPT student should be able to communicate in that language. Otherwise, why are they doing in that college? If I am doing MPT from Maharashtra, I should learn Marathi. And I should actually be able to communicate with the Marathi patient. I cannot tell that I don't know Marathi. That and all nothing. In BPT they can tell because they are children, they can tell I don't know. In MPT you are a professional. So don't act like children. You will be treated like primary school children only, not as professionals. So always remember and ensure that the cases has to be there during teaching also. See exam, you are afraid that in an exam if a real patient comes means oh my goodness gone. I don't know what I am going to do. You get depressed. But regular education itself, instruction itself throughout the two and two years, one and a half years or this two and a half years if, for example, with patients the instructions was done, 
Imagine a hypothetical scenario where the faculty shows this is the examination that I am doing on the patient. This is my thinking process because I have uh, seen these findings in this patient and I am going to use the treatment techniques and I am using it now. Okay, this is live. So that means I am treating the patient at the same time I am explaining what is my thinking process so that the postgraduate students can get that thinking process and keep that as an example and develop their own thinking process. Remember, you should not copy that thinking process because what patient the faculty had may not be the same what you have. Every patient is different. You need to have applied reasoning, not just uh, uh, mimicking someone else. You need to develop your own model of decision making. That is MPT. It should nurture that. Then only they will be best teachers. If no creativity, you can't be a best teacher. Problem solving cannot come if no creativity. These are all interrelated. So what we have here is this MPT. One option is the faculty is explaining live verbally. Other one is video recording of a patient. Of course with the consent of the patient for educational purposes. Ensure that such videos should never be shared on the social media. Even if the patient tells that it's okay you can share also. Don't share them on the social media. You understood what I am trying to tell? Because it is human rights uh, and you don't have any right over another person's uh, privacy. Even if they give the consent, it does not give you uh, ethically uh, what is called as permissible uh, act. It's not that. Okay? So you can't actually do that. Please don't share these kind of pictures on social media where telling that pre-treatment, post-treatment, why you have to show it on Facebook? No necessity at all. And what are they showing? Only that photo is there. Pre-treatment, post-treatment. This I can make anybody to do that. One picture you take, another picture you take. And then say, in one session I got this improvement. I am putting a challenge for all those people who are sharing the pictures give the description of the case what you exactly found in that case what made you to decide and what treatments you gave in dosage not just the name of the treatment I gave high power laser pre-treatment post treatment trigger point upper trapezius it's not enough why you didn't use the other treatments why manual techniques were not done? What made that patient to actually uh, not respond to manual techniques? What made you to decide about high power laser? Because high power laser is there in your clinic, so you used it. Because you bought it for five and a half lakhs, somebody you have to use it, so you used it. Or the company is paying you referral bonus. If you another person is buying high power laser means you will get it extra money so you will use put it in the Facebook before after treatment <laughs> huh? what I am trying to tell is the case descriptions has to come at least in that SOAP format SOAP the subjective objective assessment and the planning plan or the progression whichever and every finding has to be listed there Otherwise, don't just put the photograph. Everybody telling congratulations, congratulations, best wishes, keep it up better. That thing is going to happen. All are fake. Genuine improvements, nobody will do the show of things. Understood? So, when it comes to the skill, learning, 
the planning of the curriculum okay in an mpt how that is faced for two years or it is a three years program but i am not with the two years program anyway i am not supporting that and whether exam has to be there every year absolutely um, because at the end of the uh, program and keeping an exam is not the one suddenly in the end you keep an exam what repair work can be done so the exam has to be there at every phase uh, so if it is a refresher six months after that exam has to be there only practical and after that one year of skill training again another practical dissertation and thesis separately you keep a practical because you are expecting this MPT graduates to be guides and co-guides for the BPT or the interns projects in many of the institutions MPT with experience they are also guiding the MPT students so in this scenario they should know about research as a separate one the dissertation should not be a part of a practical exam and viva is included as part of the internal assessment or something like that. please do not do that it should be separate then only the importance comes and people should be failing in the dissertation if the dissertation is not up to the level genuine research experts have to be invited as the examiner not just the opposite college principal because what happens here is if you call that principal as the examiner that principal will call you as the examiner so that is why nowadays the UGC has put the rules that principals should not become examiners <laughs> internal or external understood see all the malpractices gets curbed and also see that what are all the specialty options that are available and what type of students should choose these specializations okay so this is a very very important the third aspect in MPT when we see first one is whether we really need to do MPT and if you are doing it means uh, what sort of an MPT what should be the actual uh, program structure okay that's what we talked till now the third is specializations and the specialties and their options and how do we decide if you are having a very very strong willpower you feel that your hands are destined to create better lives for the other people genuinely make them live a better life 24 hours they should be um, independent you should choose neuro rehab because Mobilizing a stroke patient or a paraplegic patient or a quadriplegic, it's not an ordinary story. You need grit and determination, a huge uh, spiritual uh, enlightenment, because you need to motivate the patient and the patient should feel that from you. And improvements will not come daily basis. And what improvements you see, the patient may not see. So it's a real test of... Uh, and you see for maybe it is uh, two weeks three weeks one month then only the improvement will come in a neuro rehab so you should really know that you can document the minor minor improvement but the actual milestone of important for the patient functional milestone comes after weeks not in days and neuro rehab is has two components one is adult and then pediatric but I am not going with pediatric as under neuro because pediatric is a population age wise they are not disease being a child is not a disease neurological disorder is a disease so don't club these two neuro rehab is only for adults orthopedics also adults you can have a bit of pediatric orthopedics but again extending the principles of adult and how to use it in the pediatric that's all uh, in a neuro also you can do that but there should be a separate specialization for pediatrics and geriatrics understand this don't club it in neuro 
and in this also neuro rehab is one terminology some of the colleges are providing another is providing neurological disorders like rguhs and others are providing what is called as mpt in neurology disorders are better or rehabilitation is better because pt goes with rehab so if you are mpt neuro rehabilitation it's fine but if you are md in pt you can put neurology understood and then next you see for msc in pt you want to put um, what is called as neurological disorders because msc is a master of science that is like every msc degree that is around uh, it's not a professional technical also is msc only okay so msc use it as a more general term okay neurology or neurological um, sciences okay so these kind of thing. neurosciences mpt neuroscience mpt neuroscience is wrong it's not in a pro it's not appropriate okay always remember neuroscience means it is research wise it's not uh, practice or it's not the professional domain of physical therapy as a clinical perspective okay so neuroscience term should not come orthopedics many places they give the nomenclature as musculoskeletal it's okay okay uh, but if you see for orthopedic physiotherapy again orthopedic rehabilitation orthopedics all are there they go hand in hand with the M md so it is orthopedics or neurology okay so that should go hand in hand then it gives a similar uh, like how the medical profession is following same way we are having the structure or use the terminology of apta which is like physical therapy so orthopedic physical therapy neurological physical therapy use it it's fine no problem at all it's an mpt neurological physical therapy neurological disorders it's fine uh, what is here next is who will do an ortho orthopedic is the first evolved branch of physical therapy and it is the most expanded most advanced in research if you see publications you are doing in an orthopedic physical therapy it's very very tough but if you do a publication in cardiopulmonary it's much easier because the number of articles are less number of professionals qualified in cardiopulmonary are less maximum people are ortho but the scope of orthopedic physiotherapy in masters or higher education level has never declined although there is saturation i mean the word saturation means there are more therapists to do the orthopedic treatments but still a new orthopedic therapist comes still they are successful they are having a good scope further and further so ortho has been the most stable it never fluctuates in scope wherever you go whichever side urban rural whichever area you are putting a clinic or you want to do that but only thing the disadvantage of ortho is advantage patients improve daily basis uh, but the disadvantage is patients do not respect you that much how the neuro patients might respect so always remember that coming to the nomenclature mpt itself means physiotherapy is there so no need to put orthopedic physical therapy what i was telling is if it is md put it as orthopedic physical therapy okay md orthopedics i cannot give for a physical therapist okay so md in orthopedic physical therapy maybe i got mixed it up when i was just telling but remember mpt means it should be orthopedic rehabilitation because pt and rehab goes together okay 
and MSc orthopedic uh, what is called as uh, I cannot think of musculoskeletal science okay MSc means because you are doing uh, scientist science SC okay so both things come hand in hand so these kind of things orthopedic conditions okay orthopedic disorders no because it narrows down it's not just that the disorder alone is our focus even health and wellness is also focus so all that orthopedic focus can come together if we keep the terminology in different permutations and combination it's possible okay but if it is MPT I prefer the word orthopedic rehabilitation if it is MD I prefer orthopedic physical therapy okay so on the next way MD in physiotherapy and rehabilitation or MD in community based rehabilitation can be a broader category but the community based posting should be there people should see that how the uh, actual living dwelling places of the patients how to treat the people together as one single community it should be given practical exposure it is not that a community rehab means it is like uh, only ergonomics or community rehab means it is more of uh, rural camps okay so these kind of things and again community rehab is good for uh, going abroad um, Canada especially but if you do ortho or neuro there is nothing actually going to happen further abroad okay but in India the disadvantage of orthopedic physiotherapy is the freedom of practice in orthopedic is uh, slightly lesser compared to the neurology so if you are a neuro rehab therapist the neurologist or neurosurgeon the way they engage you and they cooperate with you they motivate you uh, they stand by you is much much higher but the orthopedicians do not actually much uh, support the orthopedic physios okay basically the controversy lies in both the people we cannot blame only the orthopedicians for that they do their best for the patients as a surgeon because the whole uh, orthopedics has become now the ortho not many people are doing diploma in ortho okay MD in ortho none of the medical college is providing it's all MS ortho they are surgeons so they will try to do their level best in orthopedic surgery there's no point in blaming them that why are they doing surgery because they are surgeons they cannot blame a physiotherapist that why are they delaying their surgery because physiotherapist is known for non-operative management so they will try their level best maximum even beyond the maximum to see that how well we can make the patient normal without surgery it's not just that there is a clash in the ideology but we ensure that the orthopedician should understand what is our thinking there should be a very very transparent communication otherwise it leads to a confusion if one tells one thing to the patient orthopedician tells in one month you can get operated the therapist tells I don't think you need surgery okay so this is where that conflicts have come in ortho maximum physiotherapist who are in clinical practice if they are telling that they are facing uh, dominance and suppression from the medical field it will be likely to be an orthopedic surgeon and the patient will be an orthopedic patient okay so that is the maximum challenge that you have to get through with that in when it comes to ortho and patients don't much care for you and respect you because you are only there for their pain so pain is an added uh, attribute walking sit to stand stair climbing toileting transfer from bed neuro rehab these are all life changing so people see you as god if you are a neuro rehab therapist orthotherapist is not much seen as they are just seen as a service provider who is taking money and making me comfortable okay i have a discomfort 
he has made me comfortable. So luxury. Cardio pulmonary is life and death. It's not just the quality of life or functional recovery. It is the emergency procedures. Uh, candidates should be comfortable with the smell of anesthesia, the ICU monitoring, the sounds of the monitors and of course with blood and body fluids. If there is one specialization in physiotherapy which involves exposure to body fluids and maximum vulnerable for any kind of a pandemic is the cardiopulmonary. And it goes almost like they are like physicians. Okay, They are uh, in the same attire in the ICU with stethoscope, with mask, everything and they just do their work together. Some of the techniques of the cardiopulmonary physiotherapy are done in the ICU also by respiratory therapist, also by a duty nurse. Sometimes it is many times done by the anesthesia PGs also, postgraduates of MD anesthesia. They are also doing the uh, manual techniques of chest percussion, suctioning, uh, positioning, all that. Okay, even um, PNF for breathing activation and other things. So people do that, many things. So there's nothing uh, specific for the cardiopulmonary field. Even health and wellness, anybody who tells one, two, three, four, wearing a tight fitting dress, up and down, becomes a fitness expert. Nobody asks, what is your qualification? So many of these gyms and many of these uh, wellness centers or the spa don't have a qualified, they don't look for cardiopulmonary physios there. Okay? They don't think that even a sports physio is needed. Uh, sports physio is now the ads have come for, for Sports Authority of India. They are asking for MPT sports optional. BPT with the sports exposure is the eligibility. MPT sports is preferable or optional. This is like this ads are coming. Now it has started coming, last two years. Otherwise before that MPT never used to be mentioned in the sports uh, club or the game team, their opportunities. Okay. So remember, MPT sports should be done by a BPT candidate who is actually having a passion into sports. One girl uh, was asking me that Sir, can I do MPT? I want to do MPT sports, sir. Which college is the best in India? She asked me. I'll come to colleges, but point is, I asked her, which sports do you play? She told, no, I don't play any sports. I told, how will you understand a sports person if you are not playing sports? It's understandable. It's, uh, see, one thing I'll tell you, sports, the athletes are different category. They are not having diseases. You need to understand the psychological aspect of an athlete that comes with the competitive uh, level of performance. And you need to understand the biopsychological, biosocial, biopsychosocial aspects. So you need to be fit to run with the athlete. You need to be fit to demonstrate the agility drills or the field training in with the athlete. And they should see you that you are very, very disciplined and you are working and you should be a role model for the athlete. You can't be standing like this with a big tummy and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone now bend forwards. Everyone now come up. Now turn to the right. Now turn to the left. That's not a sports physiotherapy or taking the cryo spray, vapor coolant spray, tape, dressing, running on the field alone is not sports physiotherapy. Putting a needle, putting a cup, that's not sports physiotherapy. You need to combine strength and conditioning, which is performance enhancement, and you need to see for health related fitness and sports related fitness, sports specific fitness. Different sports have different demands. 
so those things have to be explored and you have to be trained and get ex uh, what is called as a number of sports are so many you can't say that i am mpt sports but i don't know what to do for swimmer at least you should know how to swim and at least you should know what are the different strokes of swimming and what is their mechanics what is the vulnerability what all injuries will come in swimmers what are their problems with improper techniques in swimming common improper techniques and how to handle that there has to be known there is no ifs and buts if the sports the mpt graduate is not getting a direct exposure with the qualified supervised training means raise your voice keep asking keep lobbying do not just take the degree and make a mockery in front of the teams you go as a sports physio and then do 1 2 3 4 4 5 or for everybody just to spray and then put a, one crepe bandage and then come back what is this for this why you need 2 3 years of education and uh, coming to the most interesting uh, specializations like pediatrics and geriatrics or women's health these are absolutely very very uh, recent there have been institutions that have been providing uh, pediatrics mpt like manipal university used to provide i was a product of manipal uh, but the pediatrics there was uh, 80% was neuro pediatrics but pediatrics en en encompasses ortho neuro cardiopulmonary pediatric fitness pediatric sports now as children are training for uh, medals so you need to understand all the specializations with respect to that age specific physiological demands and of course the exposure has to be in the schools uh screening of children with uh, orthopedic neurological cardiopulmonary aspects domains to identify disorders and if the other children who are not having any kind of major dysfunctions or disorders should be put on health and wellness program whoever is overweight those children should be given exercise prescriptions and those who are actually very athletic and fit should be incorporated into strength and conditioning and made good athletes depending upon their passion what they want to be because we need a better india uh, professor abdul kalam the former president late he is not alive now at least physically he used to tell that india what is india means it is the children who are the future citizens of india so if you want to make a great india you need to make the children to be the best so that the future they will make the flag of india flying high in any aspect now you see that the fashion industry modeling industry everybody needs health and wellness so kids they start working from young age so pediatric is important and also at the same time the fitness perspective of cardiopulmonary is also important geriatric not much in india it is limited to going to old age homes just chit chatting with that old people doing some passive movements making them sit to stand and then making them to walk with a walker Uh, our bedridden geriatric patients use a tilt table and uh, develop an adaptation against the postural hypotension come on there is a lot more to do for geriatric in terms of balance training in terms of identifying diseases like parkinsons alzheimers um, whether the task training can be incorporated with cognitive rehab whether we are using the cognitive rehab or in conjunction with occupational therapists many things have to be explored in geriatric because the number of patients of uh, elderly age it is exponentially increasing
more elderly are alive because of advanced uh, modern medicine so they are not dying at an young age so after 65 people who are living till 90 95 those age groups are larger in population so they need that and government is willing to provide uh, take care of the expenses for their health care and the things Many times the NGO, non-governmental organizations are having these uh, centers for the elderly and then they are appointing physios. The same thing happens with special education and special schools. Uh, they are appointing physical therapists because they can take care of sensory integration. Physical therapist is also as one of the teachers. Other teachers, they teach the subjects. But physical therapist teaches the functional and uh, what is called as the physical aspects of those children with disabilities. Okay? For example, National Institute of Locomotor Disabilities and all, they have uh, attached to the special schools, uh, physically, intellectually disabled, all children. So it is again an MPT pediatric domain. And to do a pediatrics MPT, can boys do that? Okay. Not as of now. Maybe after a decade, 10 years, men will be taking care of children at home. Maybe science will develop to a stage where men will be pregnant for 9 months and uh, the uterus can be transplanted from the woman to a man and then the man bears the child. Why I am telling is, if you are not having the motherhood, you can't be a successful pediatric physio. Women who are thinking that I don't want to be a mother. Motherhood is very tough, very painful. It makes me ugly. It makes my life dead. Please don't take pediatrics. Okay? Because the mother of every child is the first therapist, the pediatric therapist, because the mother trains the child everything right from birth and the pediatric therapist is the second mother for the child with differently abled or uh, challenged children. So pediatric uh, physio is not an ordinary thing. Don't just do it because of job opportunities, don't just do it because of uh, um, your clinic can be successful or a separate identity. In this state, there is no pediatric physio. I am the only pediatric physio. Further, don't do a phys pediatric degree. You see physios in Mumbai, like Dr. Asha Chetnis, Dr. Snegal Deshpande. They have done commendable work in pediatric physiotherapy. Dedicated service over a period of years, decades of dedication. They are globally famous. Everybody salutes them for their passion to change the lives of children. Also, the pediatric unit, the facilities are totally different. How you have research labs for orthopedic, neuro, cardiopulmonary, they are all different. And you see sports labs, how it should be there. Remember one thing. I am telling these words, labs, research labs. It should be there for MPT. And different specialization should have that because people who are doing the dissertation or research uh, project, they should do in that lab for that six months period. They can have the subjects coming there and they can do the evaluation. Typical orthopedic research lab can contain research equipments of orthopedic field. Maybe like an electrogoniometer or it can be a pelvic leveling device or it could be an inclinometer or it is a CROM or the BROM devices for the range of motion of neck, cervical or the back or an isokinetic dynamometer or you have what is called as this educational models of manual therapy. Okay. So that the PGs can practice using these equipments. 
a neuro rehab should have electromyography nerve conduction studies equipments and should also have biofeedback units when it comes to cardiopulmonary there has to be vo2 max equipments pulmonary function test equipments the spirogram and also you see that x-ray reading box these are all basic things that has to be there for the postgraduate students to efficiently use you are taking the extra fees for the mpt you should ensure that the facilities for the mpt is different from the facilities that are provided for the bpt students don't use the same bpt lab for the mpt education it's senseless don't read the same books of ppt in your mpt it is meaningless don't think the same as you were thinking in the ppt when you are doing mpt it is worthless so the change has to come the improvisation has to come at all levels so pediatric means there has to be a sensory integration unit including visual separate for auditory separate for somatosensory make sure that the graduates get the adequate exposure and they are able to do a better quality research so that it's publishable in better journals and if you are saying for sports definitely attached uh, sports field you need a basketball ground volleyball or you have football or cricket see most of the physios if you ask they will tell till 8th standard 9th standard i used to play once coming to 10th standard then i stopped playing now uh, only for the annual sports meet and other things so we just participate ridiculous being a physiotherapist itself they should be very very active if not they are not a physio okay good uh, they are fat or they are lean that does not matter they always tell fitness among fatness you be fat but be fit don't get tired don't get muscle pain don't get aged fast internally physiologically no so that is why conditioning is important therapists are a role model they should be able to run they should do all the task so that is why the facility should also incorporate everything i know there are lot of logistic aspects financial decisions to be made but imagine the income that you are getting from the admissions i am addressing the principals okay and you see the expense that is given as a salary the mpt teachers should be separate from those who are teaching bpt so that means like mpt only faculty are mpt but those who are teaching the mpt students versus those who are teaching the bpt students should be different the difference not come in the 5 years i have experienced 10 years i have experienced the counting the experience the difference should come in the additional skill that the faculty has got training difference should come in how they are certified practitioner for example or a certified instructor maybe you should promote the faculty to get trained that is the long term solution uh, so that they can train every student in every college students attending workshops and all they are not going to get trained directly nothing they are going to use in reality practitioners learning from workshops they will use it on patients students cannot use it unless the teachers are permitting them to use they are encouraging them to use so that is why teachers have to know first so that they will monitor and encourage the students in their routine clinical practice the postings use the technique beta what is there i am also here do it so that is the thing mentorship so make sure that the mpt faculty who are teaching mpt should be advanced they should have publications uh, they should also be preferably registered for the phd program if at all uh, because uh, phd is part of a requirement for promotions 
But remember, don't do an MPT for additional identity, don't do an MPT for additional income or anything because that is anyway there with BPT. If you are doing MPT because I can do PhD later, okay, that anyway you can do after any master's degree. You do, but sometimes the MSc you do and uh, they may not be permitting for PhD, they might permit only for MPhil. So some universities like that, but otherwise PhD is available like uh, honorary, commercial PhD, so much. There is nothing great about PhD, that letters. Um, so keep that apart. And now we see that MPT is for teaching. So the teaching skills have to be framed and uh, developed among the MPT students. So they should be encouraged in conference presentations. They should be encouraged more in uh, what is called as a public uh, talks during the camp or the awareness programs, that leadership qualities. Because BPT is actually a uh, orientation or getting idea, knowing about physiotherapy, knowing about all that options, everything. That is BPT. MPT is the place where you are actually making a best physio. That is the phase in education phase, okay? But the best physio can uh, be best after BPT itself. Nowadays, you see the reality. Uh, MPT and their teaching faculty, they are going and attending a workshop taken by a BPT. Resource person is BPT. From him, even PhD are learning. Example, Dr. Vardhaman Jain. Dr. Mayank Pushkar. Ah, with liberty, I mention these names because they are very close to my heart. Hmm? I am not telling anything wrong about them. I am telling that they are leading examples that with the Bachelor of Physiotherapy, you can be a resource person for even the PhDs of Physiotherapy. So it is about your pursuit, how you learn the techniques, how well you are maintaining yourself and your teaching skills, which you can also do as a BPT itself, you can explore. Nobody is questioning, you are a BPT, how you can be a resource person. Understood? For being a resource person, there is no eligibility. But I will talk about resource persons in teacher uh, issues, okay? because resource person comes in teachers. Okay? All this uh, professional webinar series, which we are talking, Right from beginning the council and the regulatory body. Next we saw student issues in a college. And uh, that was the most interesting part actually. Don't miss that uh, girls and boys interactions there. And of course the BPT syllabus which we saw yesterday. And we are seeing now MPT and how it can be the way forward. If as a BPT candidate you want to choose an MPT college, choose the college not because it is a government college so I am choosing. Money is less, fees less, certificate has more value, entrance exam is there, so merit based admission, so I will take that. Government colleges, you will get the worst scenario because one thing is negligence of teachers. Complacency of the teachers that whether we teach or don't teach, nothing happens. Another thing is the teachers are themselves protesting. Give us the grade lecturer and assistant professor. Because the government colleges, they have given only them physiotherapist grade 2, 3. They have not given the teaching designation. They have been treating the patients in the hospital and they are made to teach BPT, they are made to teach MPT. So they don't want to teach MPT. Because they didn't get that identity that assistant professor. And also the scale of pay. So government institutes barring very few which I mentioned earlier, Guru Nanak Dev University or Punjabi University, Patiala or SV Nirtar, which actually have some kind of facilities additionally for the MPT. In terms of patient output, yes. Research, I will tell GNDU tops the colleges. It is for sports. Unfortunately, they give that sports degree as MS in PT. Okay? 
So that is the new nomenclature again. It's a master of science, but instead of MSc, they have kept MS in PT and they are telling that it's not science, it is master of sports physiotherapy. So MSPT. And that's a big uh, clash when these M MSPTs go to the colleges for teaching, colleges don't appoint because they want MPT Artho, MPT Sports. MSPT is equivalent to MPT, we all know that, but it's not listed in the UGC nomenclature. So unfortunately, these MSPTs are not able to join into the teaching stream equivalent to the MPT sports. The research equipment in GNDU, the best. Uh, faculty is really good and you get a very good exposure. They have good tie up with the sports teams and the uh, stadium, all that. Same goes with Jamia Hamdad University in Delhi. These are all, uh, I'm telling you because of my knowledge, limited knowledge, okay. Wherever, there may be many colleges which have better clinical exposure and sports exposures. So always remember, and I do not know now, I know years before, uh, so don't make your decisions depending on what I am telling now. You should make your decision depending upon your own wisdom, analyzing every aspect. But what I will tell, private institutions in what way they are better. Um, for example, government institutes might provide the stipend. Private institutions may be uh, appointing you after your MPT degree there itself. Uh, they might help you with the uh, placements in the hospitals. So private institutes nowadays have tie up with uh, to improve their placement record so that they get more uh, ranking. So that way it is good for your career. Future next steps. Okay, when you do a degree from a private institution, you also send the degree for credential evaluation. Reply is faster in a private university. For example, for AOMPT, People from government institute apply for membership. People from private institute, they apply for membership. I send the degree for the verification. The government institute do not reply at all. Even after four, six months. The member keeps asking, when will I get my membership certificate? I tell them that after verification only, I can give the certificate. I cannot give just by seeing a picture of a degree or photocopy of a degree. Verification is an, should be done immediate. Then only it's a value for your degree. So private institutes, they respond faster. Wherever you apply, you show your degree, you submit your degree. They respond faster, they do the online system. You can easily track the process, get the person who is responsible and you can get your work done. In government, they will always tell, it is pending there, it is pending here. Now it is lunch time, come later. Private institute, it's not like that. Whenever you go, they have to take care of you. Even after you pass out. So always remember, it does not matter whether it is government or private, except the financial aspects, because government is cheaper. The MPT fees, they give stipend also. So financial aspect definitely comes a big criteria. So if people, you are financially stuck, you need to improve your merit in your BPT itself. Get your coaching for the MPT entrance exams. Uh, there are very good uh, materials written, textbooks written by our physios like Professor Arun Bala Subramaniam. MCQ questions, they are writing textbooks so that people have the training for the competitive exams. So do that. Try, give your best in the MPT entrance exams clear these government institutes and be a proud uh, MPT holder from a government institute. Teacher is there or not, you can learn from the patients because you have the merit. You have the knowledge. Knowledge is with you. You don't need a teacher. You can learn from every moment of life if you are sincere to learn. So it automatically happens. Uh, and next thing if we see the next criteria why you should choose a college is infrastructure. Of course attached hospital is a main. I have highlighted that for BPT itself. So you need that for MPT also. And sports I have told that 
uh, research labs for every specialization is important. If you are visiting a campus, see whether the MPT program, uh, they have specific specialization based labs. Some colleges also have specialization based sub departments. A college of physiotherapy, that means department of orthopedic physiotherapy, department of neurological physiotherapy, department of cardiopulmonary physiotherapy and there is a separate professor and HOD of individual these departments. Excellent. Because professor means minimum 12 years of experience after MPT or PhD with at least 5 years of teaching experience. So in this case, you know that professors are there and they are all PhD guides. Definitely you have a good platform after MPT to get into the PhD and upgrade yourself. If your line is research, okay. If your line is clinical practice, you are not going to do MPT. I told you before itself, okay. And if your line is teaching, yes, MPT is good. But make sure the catch here, the final take home message is look out for the teachers in those colleges before joining. The list of teachers have to be provided online. In the college website, the name of faculty members should be provided with their qualification and experience. If they don't give that, the college is useless. Let me be, be harsh. Let me be, be perceived arrogant. Truth is truth. Because many colleges are running without faculty. Don't join that colleges expecting that something wonders will happen out of nothing. Faculties are there coming to those colleges only for inspection purpose. They are not there for teaching, not there for teaching, treating patients. They are coming only for the exams. There is no list of faculty members, there is no qualification and experience of each and every faculty, achievements of each and every faculty in the website. That means faculty are changing very often. They don't stay in that college. Only principal name is given, principal's message is given, principal's achievements are also there and the principal is an assistant professor. Please do not join those colleges for MPT. Whatever the brand name can be there, big big private university names. Principal is only having 5 years after MPT, no publication record, no much academic achievements. And that principal, what they are going to do with other faculty, how they will nurture or mentor and promote other faculty. They are under competent. So they want other people to be followers and they will be a boss. Because boss is the one who creates followers. A leader is the one who creates leaders. We do not want followers. So teaching faculty and their proficiency, their skill, their achievements are very, very important. Um, if the best example is the college website has given the names with their qualifications, put those names and the college name in the Google. They have given orthopedic specialty three people faculty. I want to take MPT ortho in that college. So put those three faculty names one, one, one by one, one name, put the college name. Together you put in single search term, Professor XYZ, College of Physiotherapy, put that name in Google and see what comes. If nothing comes, their namesake MPT, namesake teachers, they are not actually deserving to be MPT teachers. I will talk more about teachers because there is more bitter truth very spicy information when it comes to teachers because I am uh, identified as a teacher for everyone but I know from my insight that I am a student who is learning from everyone. So please understand that best teacher is the one which is the most valuable asset in every college. Go for the college where the best teachers are. Don't go by the infrastructure, don't go by hospital facilities. Even research labs are not there. The teacher will ensure that they take the extra effort to make every student better than themselves. Because it's a sincere teacher, passionate teacher. 
you don't have to butter them you don't have to call them for parties and uh, bribe them they will do it automatically so that is where best teachers have to be identified and there is no better place than knowing from google because average teachers what they do 9 to 5 monday to saturday first to 31st salary came teach only the college over genuine teacher cannot stop only with college they will always come on youtube of course i am on that side so i am talking about my side okay if you think that you are a sincere teacher decide now that you have to come on public forum we have seen the lockdown 2 3 years how a genuine teacher can be silent just taking online classes for their own students alone those kind of teachers cannot take online classes itself because they are not used to youtube they are not used to facebook they never uh, took a webinar or a online session or teaching outside the college uh, taking conference lectures those who have taken conference lectures they are higher level of teachers they are resource persons so definitely their information will be there online in the google so students can see that at mpt level it is your duty to see that genuine teachers only you can learn best teachers you be with the best you become the best so take your best decision definitely i am opening this session now for interaction and uh, suggestions i hope more points have to come because this is a common um, conflict in our decisions that whether we have to do mpt or not mpt which specialty i have to do uh, this specialty okay but where which college i have to do okay every level there are ambiguity but when i am actually talking on an open forum what could be the role of the national association until the council is getting implemented should be to regulate the masters curriculum also equally improvised level compared to the bpt curriculum because most of the times what i see is colleges are approved for their bpt degree mpt level inspection itself many colleges don't ask for that and no approval for the mpt course from the associations very few have mpt course being approved from iap the indian association of physiotherapists but previously iap used to conduct the inspections now it is only institutional membership without an inspection so that again the procedure i told uh, i plead the national association to keep conducting the inspections because directly verifying the infrastructure at least visiting once in a while the management is spending for that ghost faculty what are ghost faculty they are not there in the college they are brought as a faculty just for the purpose of inspection otherwise no inspection means that also they will not spend and the moment no inspection means the colleges become very very irresponsible it same like no exam means how the students will study so there has to be inspection from the national association before giving approval for the mpt and then only these colleges has to be listed in the website of the national association and don't forget one thing uh, there is a webinar on college related uh, issues and other things i am going to describe there should be an open platform of seeing google maps you know that every college you can see in the google maps you definitely will see what is the distance of the college from my place you will see in the google maps please click that below there are review and rating which comes for the college use that as a universal forum even the students who have passed out if you are not willing to disclose your identity create a dummy profile and explain about the college these are the facilities which are there these are the facilities not there these things should have been better i had these all experiences in this college you write the review in google maps it goes into the google profile 
other people who are candidates who are searching the college first search it in the maps immediately below that you see that five star institution 1500 people wow and read the reviews what people have put college of physiotherapy bpt students writing that yes 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 mpt students they are writing this some of them are i did mpt ortho and they have written this some of them mpt neuro and they have written that it gives a very very valuable information don't think the national association should maintain a database of colleges and review rating all that every student can do this after passing on from the college write a review about the college in the google maps so that it helps the future students in facebook get connected with those students who are already studying in that college to get uh, internal information of how the actually the college is if you trust that they were your school seniors are they uh, mpt students there are getting prizes in a conference you see that mpt students are getting good prizes conference presentation paper presentation they did very well they get applause from everybody okay go to that student and ask how is the mpt program in your college i am actually looking forward to joining there because i see that you are an mpt student and you are doing really well share openly and enquire develop friendships different type of people will be there different things will happen gender interaction is there lot of things will happen but don't limit your search your pursuit should not be narrowed you should search wide and large and don't go abroad for an mpt degree okay so there is nothing that is extra except that canada where they give msc in rehab in uk they give msc in kinesiology okay um, these two are apparently like uh, kinesiology is a research based degree uk uh, the msc rehab is again a very community oriented okay as per their necessity but otherwise if you see the australia masters in applied science and musculoskeletal physiotherapy okay so that's the terminology there which earlier it was even one year and then one and a half and now two years the most toughest to do a higher education is australia and the more the tougher the more better you become so if you are really meritorious aim higher to learn from the best uh, overseas education means a yeah, masters level australia is the best okay because they are giving physiotherapy and it is again orthopedic or manual everything australian method of education is considered as to be the uh, leader or the front runner in providing quality higher education in physiotherapy okay uh, compared to the attractive model of us versus a uh, service model of uk okay so over to any questions and queries okay pushpanjali this is what we need to understand okay so we have dr ritu preeti dr malatesh rajanna he is always liking all the posts he is always commenting everywhere but he is not at joined the aompt midunil is from sri lanka sunita sharma i am not actually knowing um, i think she is again a faculty um remember if the syllabus is more it's because of the same topics are repeated everywhere so that is what i suggested in the bpt syllabus webinar that club those and take it once do not repeat them what is to be repeated is the competency based training has to be repeated so that clinical skills are developed by the students not by the theoretical information again and again coming in pathology subject also in pharmacology also or in clinical ortho also and pt ortho also and in cbr also cbr also you learn leprosy pathology you learn leprosy ha huh? clinical neurology you learn leprosy pt neuro you learn leprosy and ortho leprosy surgery tendon transfer 
Again, see, everywhere it is coming. So that is where the problem-based learning means totally leprosy. So it becomes all in all, everything about that leprosy. That's all. It's not going into year after year, again and again we learn the leprosy. And we become senseless. Okay? So, Jairam Krishnamurti is another who calls me like Andavare, Andavare and he never joined any of the courses of the MPT. Hmm? Yeah, AO MPT. Okay? So, remember that uh, we have uh, the education which is beyond the uh, BPT, MPT or the PhD. Because we provide education at all levels, uh, catering to the students of uh, every type. A BPT student who wants to know a particular topic can also learn from AOMPT um, theory or practicals. And an MPT student who wants to learn according to their specialization also can learn from AOMPT. And the PhDs can also learn research and publication process from the AOMPT. Okay, so we are going beyond all these degrees. Uh, being part of MP, AOMPT means that you are beyond all these degrees. Okay. Ritu ma'am must put a bigger comment. We are doing MPT for degree application or for the making ourselves more skilled into one student. This is our decision when we are moving. I actually didn't touch the grey area of MPT which is the unofficial distance mode. What do I mean by that unofficial distance mode? Is you are getting a full-fledged degree of MPT but you don't have to go to the college at all. You go only for the exams. Institutes in Uttar Pradesh, especially in the belt of Meerut, Delhi NCR, the next, after that UP, then Delhi NCR, Rajasthan and then institutes some in Karnataka and few in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Andhra Pradesh I am not aware. Okay. Uh, other states I am not much aware. But remember they are providing MPT degree without going to the college. Degree in absence. So what the clinician who is having a clinic with BPT thinks is no need to leave the clinic and go to the college. Just sit here, pay the fees at the end of the two years, get the degree, put it in the board. For this, at my level, I am not able to provide any kind of uh, suggestions because the people are lining up to take such kind of MPT degrees. And uh, patients cannot differentiate uh, a genuine MPT from an MPT who studied from these kind of institutions. But when people come with a degree from that college, where that college they are permitting this kind of distant education, I will not appoint that candidate. Maybe 10 students are coming regular to the college. Other 20 students MPT never came to the college and they gave only the exam. These 10 students think that we went fully and we got the degree. But the students who did not come also are getting the same degree. So your degree won't be valid. When you submit your degree to me, I will definitely say that that institute MPT, you are not valid. So remember that your batchmates are not at all there in the college and they are giving exam. Don't leave that. Don't think that it is our batchmates, why to raise the issue and all that. You have to raise the issue, otherwise your future is gone. That is the most highest level of corruption that moral or financial or academic corruption that people without going to the college they are getting degree. Okay, They should maintain distant education that term. Um, Distant education, you cannot provide any medical courses. You cannot provide even a diploma in distant education. Okay, diploma in physiotherapy also. Because physiotherapy is a healthcare profession. Healthcare profession courses cannot be conducted distant education. UGC order is there. 
but colleges do this because there are people who are ready to join and they want money they don't have admissions people don't come to the college money saved no need to have teachers to teach them no need to have extra facilities universities uh, government university they get affiliated to those government universities never come for inspections occasional lack inspection if they are coming to the college that time they will arrange some faculties appoint the faculty 3 months before and relieve the faculties immediately after the inspection pathetic and they may do not mention any faculty name in the website okay so these kind of institutions the change has to come from bpt they should check that such kind of institutes please do not join there that's the only solution otherwise if you want that for name sake means you are also part of that uh, officially approved quacks because no training at all is there and they get only degree so they are legally recognized quacks okay those kind of pts please don't add on to that number this is my genuine request and it's a big challenge because nobody can find out there are absentees and they will come only for exam after the exam only the students will know that or after the degree results convocation you'll be seeing like oh this is my batch mate i never saw the student okay please immediately take action and report otherwise nothing is going to change okay sometimes the faculties are also silent because job how they can raise the voice against such kind of mpt program it's their survival but students should never be silent any mpt student they should raise it because faculties uh, who are raising the voice will be thrown out other faculties are lining up to join that college so lesser salary so nobody will ask that question if they ask the question they will be thrown out of the college and they start a own academy finally they realize that okay let it happen as it happens see smoking is bad for health whether government is banning the smoking nothing whether people are not buying the cigarettes nothing then who am i to tell smoking is bad for health don't smoke don't smoke because people like to smoke they buy that they know the dangers and still they want that pleasure of having the cigarette let them do that who am i to stop them and government has approved it the shop is selling who am i to tell that don't sell so same like that this is happening in distant education mode and it's becoming a malignancy it's spreading to more many of the colleges they have seats filled but their attendance records are very poor bpt also the seat limit very important there is an institute in tamil nadu which is providing uh, nearly 280 students uh, as single batch in admission for bpt and mpt they are providing 100 how you can manage this many students where is the number of faculty to cater to this kind of students volume of students how they are giving this mpt degree this is a private deemed university in tamil nadu I think it's named after our government university tamil nadu dr m j r medical university the private university is also having almost a similar name and they are doing this kind of things who has to raise the voice you expect the national association to take an action association is also a private body university is also a private body the finances of the university are much higher they can pursue the case longer and longer and they can delay how much the association will spend the money for that case impossible so ultimately how it will change only those students who are mpt who are genuine either you should boycott such colleges and not take admission from those colleges if you have taken admissions and you are coming to the college after the degree put the case 
or raise the issue because this is a never ending carcinoma okay progressive worse than covid so to conclude make sure that you have an added responsibility when you are doing mpt you are seen upon you are looked upon has an advanced uh, qualification you are having after the bpt so do justice to that and the whole system should be adapted and modified to mean that justice okay right from teaching faculty to infrastructure to uh, the curriculum content should be modified so that the mpt is actually the strengthening program as a professional so that should be actually genuinely and purely done right so i know that these one hour webinars will go on for one and a half hours i apologize for extending the sessions but also remember that uh, the content that is here is 100 times more than what i spoke here so good luck to you all make your best decisions as i always highlighted go for the best teacher don't go for any other thing that the college is located in uh, dehradun mus masuri is just a weekend we can enjoy don't take admissions in tourist spot so that take that admission in that college <laughs> ridiculous at least for bpt some uh, children many people they choose the colleges like that okay colleges in jaipur are famous because jaipur is uh, known for this uh, attractive locations and sight seeing udaipur absolutely please okay you are not doing mpt in uh, uh, hospitality tourism you are doing mpt it is a healthcare degree it's an advanced degree so make sure that you do justice for that and uh, god bless you all be the best masters of physical therapy not by the degree but by your conscience once again the best of the new year 2022 wishes goes to you all from me professor santil p kumar on behalf of the academy of orthopedic manual physical therapists i appreciate uh, the contribution and the sincerity of the participants who have been through with me throughout this webinar session and also those who have commented and shared their thoughts so god bless you all stay smiling enjoy this evening make a better world by thinking better and doing better for everyone